This morning's return of the Space Shuttle Atlantis marks the end of an era. We're now joined by CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood from the Kennedy Space Center, where history was made, is being made, I should say. Good morning, Bill. First, tell us about this last mission. Well, you know, it's been a very successful mission. The goal was to resupply the International Space Station. They carried up more than five tons of supplies and equipment. The idea here being to stock them up to carry the station through 2012 in case NASA runs into problems with commercial cargo ships that have not yet flown but are needed to replace the shuttle. So a very successful mission for the Atlantis crew. And, of course, coming home, we'll wrap all that up with a nice bow. Now, walk us through the details for today's landing. Are there any special events planned? Well, there are. You know, the landing itself is fairly routine as these things go. What's not going to be normal is the reception that's awaiting the crew. Uh, the NASA dignitaries from all the way from the administrator down to the technicians that work on the shuttle are going to be waiting to welcome the crew home. Uh, they have an employee appreciation event where after they tow the shuttle off the runway, they're going to let the employees come up and take pictures uh, just, to, just to stroll down memory lane with the space shuttle uh, before it's hauled back to the hangar for the last time. So. Quite an emotional day down here, I think, and it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really take people back thinking about it. The end of Atlantis also means the end of the shuttle program. What's the mood like there? You know, it's, it's really interesting, Randall. It's, it's regardless of where you stand in the political spectrum, I mean, whether you think it's the right thing to end the shuttle or not, uh, there's tremendous sadness. You know, this is a vehicle that the men and women at the Kennedy Space Center and over in Houston and really across the country it's been 30 years working on nurturing, preparing for flights, receiving them when they come back. Uh, a huge emotional investment, and I think it's, it's very sad. It's almost a, I hate to say it, a funeral atmosphere. It's almost like the loss of a good friend. And I, and I think that's, that's, that's going to be the, the emotion today. It's one of great sadness, even among those who think it is the shuttle's time to go and that it should be replaced, just losing that iconic vehicle, uh, never, never to see it fly again, to launch and to come back in for that traditionally steep glide to the runway, I think that's going to be something a lot of people are going to miss. And, and how many people are losing their jobs uh, behind the end of the shuttle program? Well, right now there are about 6,000 employees that work directly in the shuttle program. That's going to be cut in half by the end of the summer. And, of course, pretty soon it's going to be down to a few hundred that are preparing shuttles for display in the museums. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a somber day from that aspect, too. All those layoff slips have already gone out. Uh, most of these people know they're losing their jobs really in just a matter of a few days or weeks. What's next for NASA? What happens to the space? Well, you mentioned the space shuttles will be going to museums, but what happens to NASA's program and all of the, the, the plans that it had to shelve when uh, everything changed a few years ago? Well, that's a really good question, and there is no clear answer. Uh, what the Obama administration has told NASA to do is to encourage the development of private sector rockets and capsules. In other words, uh, for hire vehicles that would carry astronauts to and from the space station on a commercial basis, those rockets are expected to debut sometime in the next five to six or seven years. Uh, in the meantime, NASA's going to rely on the Russians, hitching rides on Russian Soyuz spacecraft at about $60 million a seat uh, to get up and down to the station. Now, longer term, uh, NASA hopes to build what they call a heavy lift launcher. This is a big Saturn V kind of rocket that could launch a capsule into deep space from manned missions back to the moon or perhaps to an asteroid, eventually to Mars. But it's far from clear how that's going to be funded or when those rockets might fly. Very uncertain future for the manned space program as the shuttle program comes to an end. Now, I know that you talk to a lot of people. You have a lot of experience in this field. Oh, behind the scenes, what are they saying about the feasibility, the, the, the likelihood of a success of a private rocket, you know, um, a rocket not built by the government, as it were, but by private industry? Well, I don't, I don't think many people in the business uh, doubt that private industry can, can build a commercial rocket. I mean, private industry has been building all the spacecraft at this point anyway. Uh, it's a different philosophy and it's a different approach in that NASA won't have total control over these vehicles. They're basically hiring someone else to build and fly them for the government. Uh, that's certainly a big change, but I don't think anybody doubts that that can happen. I think the big uncertainty hanging over the program is this exploration part. Will NASA get the funding to build the spacecraft to go back out into space and really do the exploration that a lot of people associate NASA with? That is a big unknown. Uh, I think they'll get the commercial craft up and running at some point, uh, but everything else is really up in the air, literally. Bill, you've been covering NASA for, what, almost 20 years now. 
I'm wondering, what's your fondest memory of the shuttle program? What will stay with you? You know, that's a tough one. I remember my first launch as a college reporter was the second shuttle mission back in 1981, and no launch has ever equaled that experience. It was, it was overwhelming. You know, the, the sound three miles from the pad, the way your clothes are shaking on your body, the rumble, the, the way the earth shakes, and it really it inspired me to go into this full time and to cover the shuttle program as a career. Um, that second flight is the one I'll always remember, and of course the Hubble Space Telescope missions the Challenger accident, Columbia, all of those things are burned into my memory, but, but that first launch was the one that I'll always treasure. Bill Harwood, CBS News space consultant, thanks so much for joining us this morning.